Hey guys, what's going on? Captain Cody Davis here. Welcome to another episode of Tight Splice Charters. Sitting on the south end of Lake Okeechobee right now, and uh, it is the first full moon in May. What does that mean? That means the shellcracker and the bluegill are locked on beds right now. That's kind of what I started out the morning doing. Uh, you know, ran out here, found an area yesterday that had a lot of them on it, power pulled down right on the mark, and the first five casts, I caught five fish. If you guys watched my video a couple weeks ago where me and Breezy were out here throwing the beetle spins and the little grub tails and stuff, same general area, except now you're power pulling down and fishing one particular spot as opposed to roaming around. Uh, as I mentioned last time, the blue we were not anywhere near the full moon, so they were kind of all just scattered around. Now they're locked in one spot on their beds. Find a clear spot, a uh, light spot on the bottom, that's usually a bluegill bed. And the way I'm doing it, uh, as opposed to the beetle spin last time, I'm just taking a small hook with a split shot, a little cork, and an ultralight spinner like we were using last time, and uh, hooking live crickets or little wiggler worms on there, throwing it to the clear spot, and you're catching pretty much all you want. These are the fish you want to take home and eat. They're great eating, bluegill and shellcracker. I know they're a little smaller than maybe a catfish or a bass, but they taste much better and you, you can keep 25 a person. So, uh, you know, you can get yourself a pretty good batch of fish there, especially if you bring a couple people. Super fun. Uh, they fight real hard. I've probably got 20 in the boat. I'm not keeping them to eat. I am actually going to be stocking the pond. You guys see me feeding all the fish in and stuff in my videos. Uh, I'm trying to really maximize the amount of fish in there because that is not actually my pond. That's actually on my in-laws property. Me and Breezy recently bought a house and uh, we are going to be digging a pond on our property, property here in the near future. So I figure I could put them all in there and then that way when our pond is up and ready, it's much easier to go a few houses down and uh, you know, catch fish or whatnot, take what I need out of their pond and put them in ours to get our pond started as opposed to coming out here and trying to figure out where all the fish are and catching new ones. Um, and don't worry that their pond is totally not overcrowded. It's a, it's a pretty good size. We don't really have that many fish in there as of right now. So I'm gonna be putting these bluegill and shellcracker in there. Got some catfish in there, a couple mudfish, obviously some bass. And uh, I've, like I said, I'm probably five or six, maybe eight short of a limit right now, but I'm kind of pulling off to go do some bass fishing. Um, I kind of had a little mishap where my cricket cage fell over and I didn't notice for about five minutes. So I probably used 20 crickets, 25 crickets on a hook. I bought a hundred and there's probably 10 left in here and my boat is gonna be chirping for a good week now. So that should be fun. But as you can see above me, we've got some cloud cover, a little bit of overcast conditions. The sun keeps poking out like it is right now, but then it'll go behind these clouds. And that gets me all antsy because this time of year, in my opinion, overcast weather really helps out the bass bite. Um, so we're kind of kind of going to go get right to it here. You guys, you guys are going to see the footage of me catching the bluegill and the shellcracker, and then it should just roll right into the bass fishing. Uh, again, you're going to see these are big bluegill. These are big shellcrackers, and these big bass are in here feeding on them. So you're throwing stuff with a big profile. The overcast conditions mean they might, and I don't know yet, I haven't started, choke this thing like crazy. The popping frog, which you guys saw me catch some big ones on in the last video. Conditions are setting up right for this today. The same swim jig I always throw, just a black and blue swim jig. The water's, the, the wind's supposed to blow a different direction than it's blowing today, and it's supposed to blow half the speed it's blowing today. So it's muddied up a little bit of the water, which I think it might actually help me. We'll see. And then obviously my favorite, just the big flipping jig. I really think they might really get on this today as well because obviously they're in here feeding on these bluegill that are sitting ducks that won't leave their bed. So I don't know. We're going to see what happens. Again, I appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I appreciate all the kind words in the comments. Like I said, uh, the why we bass fish video. Uh, you know, I had a lot of fun shooting that. It was it literally took me 10 minutes out here by myself. And, uh, you know, I, I, I do appreciate all the kind words from that and all the shares of the video. So, I don't know. I'm going to see if we can catch a 65-pound bag for you guys today. And real quick, I may or may not keep a bass or two to bring to the pond. Keep in mind, all of those big fish you've been seeing me catch in the past few videos, I have not brought any to the pond. I just feel weird taking a big bass from Lake Okeechobee and putting it in a pond. I don't know why, but um, I'm not telling like I'm killing it and I'm just gonna be giving it all the food at once for the rest of its life. It doesn't even have to work for it. 
But I don't know, if I catch a five, six, seven pounder today, I might bring her home to the pond and film me releasing her. So we'll see. I appreciate you guys watching. Let's see if we can catch some big fish. There's a big shell cracker. I just think they're so damn cool looking. And you can see how much thicker and wider they are across the back as opposed to a bluegill. I think that's why they fight much harder, but I just think they're so cool looking. And uh, obviously the big bass are in here eating these as well. So you can imagine the bass we're targeting, flipping that big jig, uh, you know, throwing that frog. This is what you're trying to imitate. So any bass I could suck one of these guys down is pretty big and they are around here pretty cool oh. There's a big shell cracker. I just think they're so damn cool looking. And you can see how much thicker and wider they are across the back as opposed to a bluegill. I think that's why they fight much harder, but I just think they're so cool looking. And uh, obviously the big bass are in here eating these as well. So you can imagine the bass we're targeting, flipping that big jig, uh, you know, throwing that frog. This is what you're trying to imitate. So any bass I could suck one of these guys down is pretty big and they are around here. They're big. hand is wide open behind it. You can't even see it.
right guys I'm gonna give you a quick tip and this one applies to flipping and pitching whether you're flipping a big jig like I am here a tube a Sanko a beaver it doesn't matter this will apply to any any place anytime you're flipping um, and especially when it comes to the summer months here in Florida you know our fish are very active right now they're uh, you know they're they're not um, lethargic in any way I mean they're wanting to eat and they're moving around chasing bluegill so it really applies to this time of year as well and this is just something that has really helped a lot of my clients they say you know a lot of my people that come and charter me uh, a lot of them lately have been wanting just to get on to learn how to flip and pitch whether it's just a you know help themselves out here but a lot of them you know are from out of town and they really want to learn it here so they can bring it home and apply it to their home lakes which is great okeechobee is a great place to practice uh, obviously because we have so much to flip and it's a key technique out here so i enjoy teaching people how to do it i am by far, you know far from the best at it or a professional at it but it is my favorite way to fish so this is today's tip kind of deal um a big mistake I see people making is they'll take a jig, we'll just take a jig for instance, and they'll flip it to wherever they're, whatever they're fishing. And the first thing they worry about is working that bait. You know, whether you're just dragging it or, you know, they're hopping the bait. You know, I tend to flip a jig into a spot, let it sit on the bottom, and tip wrap. Let's try that again. So a big, you know, we'll take this jig for instance, a lot, what I see a lot of people do is they'll flip to their target and as soon as it hits the bottom, they go about getting ready to, the first thing in their head is worrying about working the bait. Whether it's, you know, sometimes I'll flip a jig to a target and I like to let it hit the bottom and I like to hop it. Okay, hop it in place for a couple times, reel it out, whether you're dragging. Um, you know, in my previous videos, you guys saw a lot of my jig videos, we were actually getting the bites flipping to the target, letting it hit the bottom and almost dragging it off like a worm and they pick it up off the bottom like that. But if, either way, people will get on the boat, they flip, it hits the water, they see the line slack that it hit the bottom and they just go about, you know, worry about popping it or dragging it. The biggest, thought I had one, the biggest tip I can give you, and this is kind of how I teach people to, to flip, is when you make that flip and you see, you know, your bait's on the bottom, when you engage that reel and go to reel up that slack, don't lift worrying about working the bait when you go to lift anticipate that you already know there is a fish on there so don't go and pop the rod up like this not checking because if there's a fish on there he's going to tight line you like he's probably moving off with it you're out of position you reach down do some crazy hook set drop slack in the line whatever you panic and you're going to miss the fish nine times out of ten um so, you know, you find, you can see this reed clump here in front of me, I believe. Now I know you can, especially when you come up to a high percentage target, I would call it, make your flip. See, I've let it hit the bottom. I don't go up and start working the bait. I reel up and just slowly lift, ready to set the hook if I feel anything different. A lot of people maybe don't know. I don't know when I'm getting a bite. If your bait falls down into a spot clean and doesn't hit anything on the way down and you see that it just made a clean fall and you lift and it's heavy and it feels different in any way, you swing. You know, grass doesn't just go down and lay on top of your jig. Something got up, something's got it and is sitting there with it and or moving off with it. So again, that was horrible. Pick a target, flip the jig, whatever, let it lay on the bottom slowly lift up and you're anticipating that there's a there's a fish on there already um, this will just help you a ton it also slows you down um, you know you're checking okay there's not one there now I, there was well that was a horrible example <laughs> because I told you there wasn't one there, but there was. But, see, it slows you down. And there you go. That was not the best example, but you get what I'm talking about. The fact that it's, he was on there and was swimming out at me, so I couldn't feel him. But when you lift and you feel anything, like what I just did there, when I went to pop that jig, something didn't feel right. You swing. Um, 
And yeah, that's basically it. So remember, pick a target, make an accurate flip, let it fall on a slack line, and don't worry about working the bait so much. 99, 80% of your bites are gonna come as soon as it goes in. Reel up your slack, lift the rod tip real slow. One, so that if he's on there, you're in position to set the hook. And two, you don't feel you.